This question is taken from the Anger 2020 section 1 paper and it is question 3. So we read Uranium 238 decays via alpha and beta minus emissions to become a stable isotope lead 206. How many beta minus particles are emitted in the decay of one uranium 238 nucleus? So immediately when we do these questions with alpha and beta decay, then we should note that alpha is very useful in constraining constraining the numbers. So alpha changes the atomic mass or atomic number, so the number of nucleons. So from 238 to 206, only alpha must have changed this. So only alpha change the atomic number. So from 238 to 206, then there is 32 difference in nucleon number. So this corresponds to 8 alpha emitted. So, okay, so now, now we know the number of alpha, alpha emitted. Why, why was this useful in thinking about how to get beta? Well, beta minus will be useful in determining how how the proton number would have developed throughout the decay process. So because the alpha takes away two, every, every time you decay, the alpha takes away two, then 92 minus eight alpha decays must be 76, which is, a, which, so we can see there is a discrepancy between this and the 82. So thankfully the beta minus particles do not change our atomic number but they do change the proton number they increase it by by one so there must have been six beta minus decays or six beta minus particles emitted so that 76 at six is 82 so it must have been six beta minus decays and so so this is useful in these types of questions where you need to work out either the alpha or beta particles that have been emitted so whenever you notice the changes in the atomic number, think about the alpha particles, and then for any changes in the proton number, think about the beta minus particles after, after deducing what happens with the alpha.